Thank you, everyone. Um, up next, we have a discussion on Redfish DCIM power and cooling. I believe this is set for an open discussion. Um, Brevin, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, yeah, so is my screen sharing? It is. All right, good. I guess I just have the incorrect look there. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for all your participation. This is a little short open discussion, um, and there's some things that I'd like to gain from it. And I appreciate uh, anybody's comment. Please join in on the Zoom call. Uh, any verbal comments, any other comments are, are very welcome. So uh, I know that John Leong is very active uh, within Redfish as hard, from a hardware management perspective. And he's also been engaging with the data center facility team uh, because there is the DSIM bundle associated with uh, the API uh, based uh, redfish. And so um, he's come in a couple, talked a couple of times. I think that uh, Anand and the security project, uh, a lot more is being, a lot more focused with that the group is looking at monitoring control than it has in the past. And so I uh, want to have a discussion about, uh, you know, the challenges faced and how to get involved with uh, developing redfish uh, profile. So, uh, quick 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 run through of how this looks in terms of or why we're talking about it uh, so it's a work in progress for the data center infrastructure management um, it uh, is in the data center facility project and specifically in the technology area of uh, monitoring and control um, api based you know human readable machine capable um, it's been developed for hardware uh, for management I believe that our modular data centers were looking into developing profiles. I know that the advanced cooling uh, solutions are developing profiles for the very door heat exchangers and, and some other uh, items like that. And as I mentioned, John Leong is uh, very active in, in, in pushing for uh, the adoption there. Uh, there's, there's, there's sensor models uh, where you would have the reading and the metadata associated with those. Uh, we also have um, the ability to query those data, that data, whether it's in a, a collection, uh, whether it's in an array or a specific data point. Um, and there's also uh, you know, alarms collection where it would uh, output uh, if something went over a threshold in the same uh, realm that you would normally see an SNMP trap uh, on that type of uh, area. And so uh, it, it's been developed over overall and you, you have the various routes like this specifically is a rack power distribution unit um, and, and it shows how it's uh, coordinated with the different collections and sensors and alarms um, there and then you know same thing when you look at it from a whole perspective you have the, the, the service route and then that expands out into the different pieces of the facility uh, specifically the power equipment HVHC um, and, and, it, and it looks like, uh, you know, API, uh, where you have either JSON or XML uh, type formats, and that's, uh, you know, what it would, would look like. Now, I think that where I would like to open up the discussion is, is what kind of challenges are faced within the data center facility for uh, either developing or implementing this? Uh, same thing with the other pieces, integration, uh, adoption, you know, protocol transformation, you know, the previous panel we talked about, BACnet, Modbus, encryption, all of those types, and, and, and now you're talking about security. So how how does the, the group see, you know, Redfish and, and its future within the, you know, facility? So Brevin, I have seen that Jeff um, Autor has joined. He is on mute. I'm not sure if he wants to chime in. And we've also, um, Jeff also just posted in the chat a link to a white paper talking about Redfish DCIM, some of the published models available there through DMTF. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in a few things. And, and yeah, I, the, I, and great, great to see the, the talk uh, come up here. Uh, so uh, happy about that. Uh, so I, I guess the, the first thing I would, I'll point out is that the 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 power distribution unit models that were shown here 
so those have actually been published as uh, as 1.0, you know, standard, uh, and that was done at the at the end of uh, of 2019. So there's uh, there has uh, you know it's, so you know th that part at least is has uh, has gone. Uh, the, you know, the good news is that if, you know, if there's things that we missed, it's, you know, for those of you not familiar with Redfish, it's, it's extremely simple to add, uh, you know, add additional data and more equipment and so forth to the models. It doesn't break anything. It's all, can all be done in a backward compatibility way. And we do this all the time. Um, Congratulations. But, that's, that's yeah. really good news. Yeah, it, it was a long time coming. And I'll, and I'll tell you the, the, if you want to talk about challenges from, from what I see, and I did a lot of the, uh, the modeling work and, and a lot of times have to ask you know folks about uh you know about how the equipment you know gets pushed together and so you know asking for lots of block diagrams has been the has been the single most important uh thing for us to to make progress here but uh but yeah we we need that subject matter expert you know input into the into the standard to to get the modeling correct um and what we have found in the, the kind of the design tenant that we go with is you know we 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 go we go out with the the basics uh, you know, and we can flesh out the model and make it, you know, make it more, uh, you know, more deep and more, more broad over time. Uh, we, we just don't want to make sure we want to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, code ourselves into a corner with a bad design. Uh, and we've been pretty successful at, at that. And, and, and it turns out that, you know, that all, uh, uh, all programmers are lazy by definition. Uh, so, uh, you know, until they see it you know, go final, they don't want to touch it. So, uh, so we, we've, we've made some pretty good practices of saying, all right, well, it's 1.0, it's, it's final. Uh, but uh, like, oh, you guys didn't do this, this, this. Okay, well, there's 1.1 and now that's final. Anyone else? Yeah, so, uh, so we do make progress on it that, in that way. But uh, uh, so I, I guess from an adoption standpoint, I can speak for, you know, for my company that, you know, we actually, uh, HPE shipped a, uh, a Redfish conforming, uh, you know, power distribution unit, uh, and and actually was a firmware upgrade to, to an existing product. So so that's available in the marketplace. Uh, I, and uh, you know, I'm working obviously with John Leong. I don't know if he's on the call, but uh, but you know, trying to to push uh, the these baseline you know profiles into uh, the various OCP uh, mm -hmm. pieces so that so that we can get a, a consistent data model and, and support uh, you know uh, across all those all the OCP covered equipment at least. And I think that the, the, the PDU, that, that rack PDU is that first step up. Um, and yep. I, I think you, you know, heard in that panel before uh, about, you know, there's just major challenges. Uh, do you see anyone else in the industry uh, farther up in the stack at the, at the UPS and, and chillers that, or even within a, uh, power monitoring system or building monitoring system, building management system that has been integrating or adopting? Uh, yeah, we've had, I, I, you know, the, the folks involved with the Redfish standard directly, I mean, we have a number of, you know, vendors that, that, that do lots of soup to nuts, you know, up and down that, that whole product stack, right? So, uh, so you know, they're certainly shown interest in incorporating, and, and, I'm, and I'm sorry, I forget the, the gentleman's name from one of the uh, Building management or, or you know DC monitoring uh, software companies, and then he showed expressed quite a bit of interest, uh, you know, at, at supporting it on the client end of that, which is good. Uh, and of course, all of this stuff is very chicken and egg. You know, until there's enough product that supports it, then the the clients don't want to write software to use it, and you know, and vice versa. So, uh, you know, so trying to see that marketplace, you know, from both ends of that, you know, of that wire is good. Um, there was also work being done uh, by uh, some some folks at Texas Tech. Uh, for you know, for uh, some 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 concepts for doing uh, some proxy or bridging, you know, applications where you could retrofit, uh, you know, existing you know things like UPSs to to like, hey, here's the here's the Redfish interface for them, and it acts as a bridge, um, you know, and I and I see that as a um, <clears throat> as as probably the most viable, <clears throat> excuse me, the most viable way to get the support into the you know the the general DCM you know architecture because. You know, this gear doesn't get replaced in the same uh, life cycles as as the IT gear. So, you know, if, if I wait 15 years for uh, you know for a full mm -hmm. replacement cycle, uh, you know, uh, then you know I'm I'm going to be long retired, and and something will have replaced Redfish twice over by then, right? So, for sure. uh, so you know, so providing some proxy pieces, and again, I think this is the kind of the big area I think for the decent work is that you know where do you provide that level of access. And how do you do your authentication controls and, and and exposures and make sure that you're not suddenly giving people you know unlimited access to the to the back nets or to the mod buses or the all the gory details behind it and so I I, I think at least that that you know modern gateway devices that have all the security uh, hardening and whatnot 
mm -hmm. that can provide that, you know, those standard interfaces, you know, can be a bridge to that without having to expose uh, or, or attempt to, to harden things after the fact. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you mentioned something there about retrofitting. And um, I mean, anybody involved within trying within the white space, uh, trying to integrate a facility system into some type of a IT or DSIM system is already using a converter. You're already taking right. Modbus TCP or Modbus um, uh, RS485 or something, and you're converting it to your Modbus TCP, and being able to get it over your Ethernet network. Uh, and I think I actually feel that that's the biggest challenge is where on the market do we have a, an, a, a gateway or an aggregator of these protocol transformers that then uh, write that code or you know, pull in that data, reconfigure it and write that code out um, that can be uh, developed. And you know, I know that on the hardware side, they're talking about you know what your use case is to manage your hardware. Um, where do we, how do we sell or market this idea of, you know, that ideal data center that you guys always talked about, where you had integration of your IT and your facility and they work together. This yep. is almost one of those base foundations is you have to bring all that data in a single system to be able to make those decisions on both sides. You know, and, and that's what this, that's why this whole area has been of, of interest to me. And it's, it's sort of adjacent to a lot of the product stuff I work on anyway, but I just look at the, you know, the, the, the promises or the, the, the kind of, you know, blue sky notions of, of doing something that, you know, Hey, I can coordinate, uh, you know, power usage and, you know, not have stranded power and, and overcooling in some areas in the data center, you know, being able to, and we have all this data and it's just not available in, common format so that somebody could actually invest that time uh, to go write client that would say, hey, let me go figure out the, you know, based on compass orientations or heat cycles on the out the exterior windows and stuff, you know, I, I can't go write code to to try to go, you know, harvest all that and without without common data format. So, you know, and, and, and that's why I think the standards are important there because, well, you know, there, there's no money to be made in the standards. So like, hey, just just expose the data in in one common form, and then let you know. Then let's go do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's a ripe environment, and it's a, it's a matter of getting uh, uh, you know enough folks to uh, on the client side to say, hey, if the data is available, uh, you know, let me start using it. Uh, you know, and if we need to get some of these protocol transformers or other you know an aggregator pieces, then you know you know pony up uh, pony up some some pens and some some keyboards. Uh, start start writing some stuff. Agreed. Agreed. Well, thank you very much, Jeff, uh, for, for your input and, and joining in. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation, uh, like I said, uh, with the uh, sort of expansion of monitoring control as a focus area, or at least personnel coming into the data center facility group. I expect it to get more attention um, over, the, over this uh, next period of time. And so I appreciate, uh, appreciate you. And I think we'll get off and we'll hand it over to a break, movement break. Everybody get up and uh, get your coffee. I'm not sure if Facebook is giving away free coffee anymore in towards the afternoon. Uh, but uh, take a movement break and we'll come back in uh, Modular Data Center. Uh, we'll come in with a few more. Thank you again, Jeff, for, for joining in. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, Brevin just got an update. We still have plenty of coffee vouchers left. So if you'd like some coffee delivered to you via DoorDash, courtesy of Facebook, go click the link in the lobby there to redeem. And as Brevin mentioned, there is also a movement break. Um, we're doing some hair yoga, completely optional. But if you want to go check